Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, today is going to be a little bit different. Um, uh, still a little cosplay related, but this is going to be a video that uh, I get this question a lot. Um, how do I handle personal life, cosplay life, and service dog handler life? I do have a service dog. Um, she's got an Instagram. I'll put the link for her Instagram down below. Um, and the link for my Instagram down below as well. Um, I do post tons of pictures. Um, but as a cosplayer and a service dog handler, um, how do I balance that out? Um, she goes with me to conventions. We actually just recently went to DocuCon 2019. Um, and she does cosplay with me. Um, I do make her costumes. I, like I said in my last video, I'm still trying to get into, um, probably not my last video. Any, I, anyway, um, I'm trying to get into making my own costumes. In fact, right next to me, I've got a dress form that's got tape on it. Um, I'm going to make a pattern for a surprise cosplay, um, for my Patreon in January. Um, that will be announced at the end of December, what those sets will be. I'll put the link for my Patreon down below, as well as my coffee. That'll be, that's all PG. My Patreon's a little PG plus. Um, but, um, I make her costumes and, um, she wears them pretty well. I mean, they're pretty comfortable. I use fleece for all of her stuff, uh, just cause it's soft and a little bit better. Um, our most recent one that we did was Harley Quinn and Jolteon. Her Jolteon was unfortunately not completed, um, so it was just kind of a half-assed Jolteon. Um, but the Harley Quinn one was pretty easy to make and pretty quick and completed, so that one will be, um, a good one for future use. Um, but, um, our next one coming up, I'm making an Umbreon cosplay for her. Um, uh, can, can you see the correlation? I'm obsessed with the evolutions. Obsessed. <laughs> um, so, uh, she and, um, we have a convention up in March and I'm not going to tell you guys what the set for that's going to be, but be ready. I'm very excited for, um, it's going to be a lot of work, but I'm very excited for the cosplays in March. Um, I have some of my lineup made, not all of it, but some of it. Um, I'm, as for personal life and service dog life, um, that's also pretty easy to balance out. I don't take her everywhere with me, but I do like to take her a lot of places. Um, and I do have stories of times where I've been kicked out or, um, told I was a liar, said that, you know, you don't look like you have disability. I may not look like I have a disability, but I do, which is why I have a service dog. Um, in a future video, I will do, um, scary service dog, uh, stories as well as, um, what you have to do in order to get a service dog if you're interested in one. Um, uh, that video will be coming up soon as well. Um, but I find it easy to handle having a service dog. Um, there are times where I'm like, this is really difficult. Why did I sign up for this? You know, do I really need this? Um, and I do, I do. Um, I'm not going to tell you guys what my disability is only because, um, that's more of a private matter, but I do require a service dog. Um, now I do find mornings where I wake up and I'm like, I feel like I could conquer the whole day. I don't think I need to take her with me. And I don't, and I'm fine. Um, it, she's, she's definitely there for, in case I have this issue, then she's there to help me with the issue. Um, but she's amazing. She's a Border Collie Whip at Mix. She's 25 to 30 pounds. She's about to turn two years old in January. Um, she... I got her when she was seven months old. She can like sense I'm talking about her. <laughs> um, I got her when she was seven months old and um, we had gone to uh, six or seven different shelters that day um, and could not find anything. There are rules for service dogs and you know, so they can't have, they can't be blind, they can't be deaf, they can't be taking all these medications and things like that. And shelter dogs tend to have a bunch of issues that 
you know, I can't have. So, um, we did play with a bunch of the dogs, so I bet that really helped them a lot. Um, but when we got home that night, we looked on, my mom looked on Craigslist and found Lucy. Um, the owner, the previous owner was unfortunately unable to keep her due to the fact that he traveled a lot and found it difficult to take care of her and be out of state. So, um, we were more than happy to, um, adopt her. Um, when we, when we got there, it was an instant connection. You know, when you meet someone for the first time, you can really tell whether or not they're going to be someone that you know forever. Um, Lucy was an instant connection. She jumped on me. She licked my face. She just like just absolutely loved me. Um, we were more than happy to adopt her. And it did, it was an adjustment because my previous dog, uh, who died, who passed away in a very tragic accident, um, was a Chewini. So about small. He, he was really small. Um, and so going from having this like 10 pound dog to having this 25 to 30 pound dog was a really big adjustment for the family, especially our two other dogs. I have a black lab and I have a German shepherd. And so those were some really interesting, um, transitions and, um, they're still trying to get used to her, even though I've had her for a year plus. So, um, she's an amazing dog. She's still in training. So training takes, uh, two years. Sometimes it takes longer. It really depends. Um, it might take longer for us just because of, um, time. Like I, I personally don't have as much time as I used to. Um, I still do work with her and she still is doing amazing. Um, when we went to the previous convention that we were just at, um, DocuCon 2019, um, uh, she did stellar. She did amazing. Um, so we, I was, I was so thankful for that. That was amazing. Um, cause I had worried about, you know, whether or not she was going to be, where she's supposed to be because I had to get two jobs and one of them was a spirit Halloween assistant manager. So I couldn't, um, I couldn't, um, take her to work because of all the jumping things that would give her anxiety. So, um, I wasn't able to take her to work there, but I also do own my own business. I own a consignment and gift shop. So I can take her to work with me there. I don't usually because it's, um, not, um, difficult. So it's not like fast paced. It's not like constantly, you know, people are always in and out. Um, but that doesn't mean it's like the most busy place in the world. So I feel like I can handle doing it myself, especially as the owner. It gives me a different confidence than it would if I was just an employee. So, um, I do, um, I do work full time. So it's definitely different to do, to handle. Um, but I, I love, I love her so much. Um, if you guys have questions about service dogs and what it's like having a cosplay service dog, what organization do I train my service dog through? Um, I'm Colorado based, so I do train her in state. Um, and I'm not going through like, um, a specific program. I'm going through a nonprofit organization. Um, and so if you guys have any questions, um, you know, if you're Colorado based, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. Um, if you're not Colorado based, it might be best to look up the laws on the ADA website. Um, they will have the best for your state. Um, I personally don't know all 50 states, unfortunately. Oh gosh. Um, I'll put down her, um, her cosplay Instagram, my cosplay Instagram, my Patreon, and my coffee, um, down in the description. Um, uh, if you guys like this video and would like to know more about cosplay and service dogs, um, subscribe to my channel. Um, uh, if you guys have future video ideas or things that you just would like to know that might be good for me to make a video about, um, feel free to comment. Um, I'm always willing to do more. So, um, please feel free to comment any questions. Um, but yeah, I will see you guys next week. Mwah.